The research that I'm currently undertaking upon the invitation of Kyle, it deals uh, with the issues of female domestic migrant workers. And I will explain in a bit the angles and the lenses that I use, that I'm using to in investigate this topic. The first lens which I'm using is Islamic diversity. And by Islamic diversity, I take into account the heterogeneity of interpretations and practices in the world of Islam, in terms of Islamic teachings, and also in terms of approaches to equality with respect to gender equality, race equality, and other dimensions of equality. In terms of uh, the other lens, I'm using intersectionality. And intersectionality is a lens which takes into account the intersectionality of gender with migration and other dimensions of identity, such as uh, ethnicity, nationality, faith, and so on and so forth. So why are these two lenses important in the context of female domestic migrant workers in Qatar? Let me explain. Uh, migration. Uh, happens to be uh, a feminine phenomenon, although the emphasis in the mainstream research historically has been on male migrants. However, when we investigate a bit further, it will appear that at least 50%, and in some instances, more than 50% of migrants, they happen to be women. <clears throat> and in the context of domestic workers, they constitute the majority of uh, migrant workers. So for example, uh, take the case of Qatar. Qatar comprises uh, a population of 2 million, uh, out of which more than 86% happen to be migrant workers and, and their dependents. And uh, if we look at the figures of uh, domestic workers, uh, as per the 2010 statistics, around 132,000 domestic workers are there in Qatar, out of which approximately 84,000 are women. So yes, we can say that migration, uh, particularly in the context of domestic migrant workers, it happens to be a feminine phenomenon. So what exactly is happening uh, in the context of domestic uh, migrant workers who are females? There are two issues which come to fore. And the first issue is that they are socially isolated. Uh, they remain confined to the homes of their employers and in some instances, I don't claim that in the majority of instances, in some instances they, they are not allowed to step outside the house. They are not allowed to access community and other resources which are much needed by them in a new country, in a new city. And the second thing, uh, and the second issue, which is related to uh, domestic workers, including uh, female domestic workers, is that they are not covered uh, under the labor law. So this means that if they happen to be employed by uh, an employer or a housewife who happens to be exploitative or abusive or makes them work uh, extra hours without giving them rest period, sufficient rest period or day off, uh, and does not provide them with uh, adequate living uh, conditions, uh, adequate food, and so on and so forth, or does not provide them uh, with adequate uh, salary or the promised salary, then they do not have much legal recourse. And the existing system, which is the kafala system in Qatar, basically deprives them. So they cannot complain against their employer, and they do not have much opportunity to change their employment. And if they leave the employment without the permission of their employer or their sponsor, they are legally, uh, 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 they can be legally arrested and uh, they can be legally considered as having absconded uh, their legal duties. So these are some of the few issues which have been highlighted in the critical review, which I have recently conducted. And these have also been documented by various academic reports and also uh, reports in the media and also by uh, uh, human rights groups. 
So apparently, uh, these are the issues which have to be dealt uh, by the Qatari government and also by policy makers in Qatar and other countries. This issue is not limited to Qatar or uh, even to the GCC. Uh, the issues facing uh, domestic workers, they stretch across many countries and many continents. So, so it is not something which is specific to Arabs or specific to the Middle East or specific to Muslims. Unfortunately, and that is based on my own research because uh, in, in the past I have conducted investigations on the issues and challenges facing uh, Muslim migrant women in Australia and I have investigated and also demonstrated that they face multi-level issues at the level of macro-national, meso-organizational and micro-individual levels. Similar issues are currently facing uh, female domestic migrant workers uh, in Qatar and our hope is that perhaps at the legal level uh, there, there will be some reforms which will take care of their issues.